Hi everyone! I have another Gail Gibbons book today and what we know about Gail Gibbons is that she draws her illustrations but her books are non-fiction books so remember they are true and information books. The book I have today is called Tornadoes and I'm super excited about it. There is not a table of contents in the beginning of this book but at the end there's a page about tornado facts. It's raining hard. The winds are strong. The sky is dark. Suddenly, a twisting column of moist air reaches down from a cloud and touches the ground and makes a loud roaring sound. It is a tornado. The word tornado comes from the Spanish word tornada, meaning thunderstorm. Tornadoes begin inside storm clouds called cumulonimbus clouds, which are made up of moist air. These large clouds can grow to be tall and enormous. There's lightning, thunder, rain, hail, and high winds. When warm, humid air rises from the ground toward a dark cumulonim cumulonimbus thunderhead, it creates an updraft that pulls more warm, humid air with it. When the air rises to where the temperature is cooler, the condensation occurs, creating rain or hail. The cool air falls back down to earth, creating a downdraft. So these arrows are showing the direction of the air. If the updraft and the downdraft come together and start to spin, a funnel-shaped cloud forms inside a thunderhead and sometimes tilts to a funnel that reaches down toward the ground. As the funnel cloud spins faster and faster, it sucks up more and warm air and begin, becomes bigger and louder and more powerful. It touches the ground. A tornado is born. So this page talks about um, that there was a scale developed to talk about the severity or how strong a tornado is. So it, they can be called anything from an EF0 to an EF5. So five is the worst. So it talks about how it depends on the amount of damage caused. There's no way to measure every wind in the tornado. The wind speeds are only estimates, so they're only guesses. And so no matter how big a tornado is or how long it lasts on the ground, it's likely to cause damage. So even if it's just a little tornado, there's going to be some damage. EF0 tornadoes may have wind speeds between 65 miles an hour and 85 miles an hour. So this is an example of a zero tornado. They can damage chimneys, break limbs off trees, and blow over shallow rooted trees. EF1 tornadoes may have wind speeds between 86 and 110 miles an hour. They can peel off the surface of roofs and overturn small trucks and mobile homes. EF2 tornadoes may have wind speeds between 111 miles an hour and 135 miles an hour. They can tear the whole roof off a frame house, demolish mobile homes, and snap or uproot large trees. Yikes. An EF3 tornado may have wind speeds between 136 miles an hour and 165 miles an hour. So these people were driving and a tornado was coming, so they had to stop and go down in a ditch to try to be safe. They had no house to go and hide into or a basement. They can uproot a forest and lift heavy cars off the ground. An EF4 tornado may have wind speeds between 166 and 200 miles per hour. They can demolish well-constructed houses, leaving few walls standing. Other structures may be blown off their foundations and even moved a distance. So you can see some houses even got moved. In the F5 tornado, the most violent tornadoes, they have wind speeds of more than 200 miles an hour. Well-constructed houses can be lifted off their foundations, carried away and totally destroyed. Trains have been lifted off their tracks. The devastation is so extreme that it's hard to believe. Those are serious tornadoes. So there are two regions in the United States that experience tornadoes a lot. So none of them happen in the state we are in right now. But these are some areas um, called Tornado Alley where a lot of tornadoes might occur. That's in the middle of the United States. But we are here in Michigan. On May 3rd, 1999, 96 tornadoes went through Texas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, and Kansas, and South Dakota. It was an F EF5 tornado. The damage in the Oklahoma City area alone was valued at more than $1 billion. Meteorologists are on constant watch to predict and warn people of dangerous storms that might make tornadoes. They study computer data and radar screens. 
The National Weather Service will issue a tornado watch when tornadoes are possible. They will issue a tornado warning for a specific area where a tornado is likely to form. This information is immediately sent out on TV, radio, internet, and phones. What do you do when there's a tornado? It says what to do when a tornado approaches. If you your house has a basement, go into it right away. If you are in a house without a basement, go to a closet or bathroom far away from outside walls. Crouch down low and cover your head with your hands. Stay away from windows and outside walls. Try to cover yourself with a mattress or heavy blankets for protection from falling debris. If you can crouch, if you can crouch under a set of stairs. If you are in a car, get out immediately. Try to find a low spot, such as a ditch to lie in. Lie fat, flat on your stomach and cover your head with your hands. After the tornado, be careful of fallen electrical wires, broken glass, and unsafe structures. Try to have an adult help you. I forgot to read the last page, so I'll choose some of the facts from this book. It says, most tornadoes occur in the afternoon. Most tornadoes last less than 10 minutes. Let's see, this one says, in the United States, only the National Weather Service issues watches and warnings worldwide. Funnel clouds form over water, too. When they touch down in the water, they are called water spouts. Before we talk about the information in the book, I wanted to talk about Gail Gibbons' illustrations. So it looks to me like she might use um, a combination of like watercolors, maybe crayons, markers. Um, she definitely mixes colors. She's not like Todd Parr or um, Dr. Seuss. But I really liked her drawings, especially on the pages where there was a lot to see. This was so interesting to me. What happens when a tornado hits? There's so many details in her drawings and it really helps you understand the information in the book. Speaking of information, I wonder what you learned. Something you might have learned is that tornadoes are given a score. A, an F0 tornado is a, kind of a smaller tornado, but an F5 tornado is the worst tornado. Over 200 miles an hour winds and it destroys pretty much everything in its path. Tornadoes do happen in Michigan sometimes, but I don't know if you remember that part in the book where Gail Gibbons talked about Tornado Alley. Tornado Alley is a spot in the United States where see that yellow spot that's where a lot of tornadoes occur that is a mixture of different weather and different weather systems and so it's just a perfect place for tornadoes to happen if you met somebody who never knew anything about tornadoes had no idea what they were i wonder what you could teach them about tornadoes from reading this book maybe you want to tell them that tornadoes are made up of strong winds spiraling and swirling maybe you want to teach them that tornadoes happen mostly in the afternoons Maybe you want to tell them different ways to be safe if there is a tornado. I'm so glad I got a chance to read this book with you while we're still talking about weather and science. Thank you for reading with me, and I will see you next time with another Gail Gibbons book, this time about hurricanes. Bye!